Okay, it's uh, March 2018. This is the first time that I've been out to the club this year. I haven't been here for several months. As you can see, there's still snow on the ground and stuff like that. But uh, the weather's turning nice and uh, we're going to get back at it. Hang on. Okay, my friends. I'm going to show you the arrow that I'm using these days. Arrows are quite important. This arrow is a gold tip traditional 500, 500 spine. I'm using a 300 grain tip on this arrow. That's what it takes to bring this one around. I experimented 125, 145, 175, 200, 250. The 300 is shooting, correcting the quickest and the straightest. Um, it makes for a heavy arrow though. This is 620 grains, so really from about 15 to 30 yards, my gap compromise is fairly close. You know, slightly under or slightly above, but fairly close. So this is a very good short range arrow. Okay. The um, fact that I put this yellow feather on here, I don't see it. You know, it's down at the bottom. I only see the white one. So the reason I did that is if I want to use a blunt, I have the blunt on and with one yellow arrow, I can tell which one is the blunt compared to all my, my white feathers. So, uh, 620 grains, big heavy tip, six and a half inch feathers at the back. I cut them myself, six and a half, lots of drag. Now look, there's two ways that you can adjust an arrow. You can get an arrow and you can get it so that it shoots a uh, 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 weak. If you get a weak arrow, now you can start cutting off, you know, quarter inch or a half inch at the time until it gets stiff and turns around. That way you'll get a short, lighter arrow. I want a big, heavy arrow. So I don't cut it back to make it stiffer. I just leave it, and instead of having starting with a weak arrow, I start with a stiff arrow. And then I just add weight until it comes around. Okay, so you can start with weak arrow, cut it back slowly until it stiffens, or you can start with a stiff arrow and add up front weight and bring it around. The up front weight just gives a further uh, forward of center balance point too, which stabilizes the arrow. So that's why I use these heavy arrows. But uh, again, 620, not 350 slow, heavy, and it will just knock a twig out of the way, bang, and hit the target. Anyhow, that's my logic in using full-length, heavy arrows. Okay? Anyhow, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, boys. I love Mother Nature. I respect Mother Nature. She'll snuff you in a second. You gotta float the eye over the arrow. You do not touch an anchor. You touch an anchor, you'll never get good. It's all bullshit. You don't aim from the corner of your face your eye will always line up to it no matter where you touch. Don't touch. Float the eye over it. It's much more accurate. Much more accurate. Mother Nature. I love the old girl, but the universe is unfolding just as it should.
This is another little bit of Viking philosophy. Remember, when your back is against the wall, you still have the wall. Don't ever forget that. Don't ever forget that. Okay? Now, when you do that kind of stuff, let's see here. It's kind of hard to see, but anyhow, you'll get your hits. And you, you see that little one, you can just see a little dot in the green leaf? Well, that's an arrow. That arrow is 620 grains, and it went right through that pine leaf, knocked it out of the way, and it's right dead in the center of the target. Okay? Use a heavy arrow. Okay, have fun. Well, guys, I'll tell you, I use one eye when I shoot. One eye. Not two. One. I started to do that just a couple of weeks ago when I switched to uh, one eye. The reason that I did it was I was shooting, or I went out shooting. It had snowed, there was a lot of snow on the ground. And it was sunny, it was very, very bright. My eyes were watering, I, I couldn't see the target, I couldn't keep my eyes open. It's very painful when the sun's out, you start to get snow blindness, you just can't see. Anyhow, I was wearing sunglasses, so that helped. And uh, uh, so I, I started shooting, you know, and I'm getting good hits. I go down, get my arrows, come back, shoot some more, get good hits. Go get the arrows, come back, shoot some more, get good hits. All of a sudden I realized that it was so bright and sunny, I was actually closing my eye because I just couldn't leave it open to shoot. And in having that eye closed, I was just getting good hits all the time. Okay, so, so when I realized that I was getting good hits all the time, I thought, it's because I'm closing my eye. So now I close my eye all the time and I get good hits all the time. Um, so that's what I had to say about closing your eye. Now that may not seem like such a good thing to do, but again, when you do it, you get good hits. So I close my eye. I get a very clear picture of the target. My left to right is greatly improved. I would say Nothing wrong with closing your eye. I'll be back. Have fun. Okay, guys. Looks like a bush plane flying over. What's the most important thing in archery, in my opinion? Do you know what it is? I bet you don't. Relaxing the muscle over your scapula is the most important thing in archery. The right side. Relaxing the right side. Think I could get them? <laughs> Relaxing the right side.
you have to relax your hand, your wrist, your forearm, your shoulder. But if you do all that and you stand perfectly and you bend your knee just right and so on and so forth, you're still going to miss if you don't relax that big muscle over your scapula. Okay, we'll stop with the bullseye. Listen, I like bullseyes and I don't like bullshit. Okay, there's a lot of things that you can do in archery, you know. You can shoot with both eyes, you can shoot with one eye, you can squint one eye, you can bend your knee, you can stand 90 degrees to the target, you can stand 45 degrees to the target, you can catch your bow, you can hold your bow vertical. All this stuff is bullshit. I can do every one of those things and I can hit or I can miss. But if I do not relax that muscle, that little one right there over my scapula, I will not hit the target. It's the most important thing. This part relaxes, the hand relaxes, the wrist relaxes, the forearm relaxes, the back of your shoulder relaxes, the top of your shoulder you'll feel it. There's two little muscles up there that I feel relax. But it's not until that one that's little muscle right over the top of the scapula, right down there. When that relaxes, I let go and I just get hit after hit after hit. If I do not relax the right side all the way right to the back, I do not get the hits. You see, it's all connected. That's the final relaxation part. When that one falls into place, it's all hanging and you're going to get good hits. Anyhow, I've said it a couple times, but I'm telling you, that's the most important part of shooting, as far as I can tell. And when you do that, you get hits. I like that last one. Mm -mm -mm. Anyhow, you guys go have some fun and think about what I'm telling you. Again. <laughs> As the spring starts to draw near, we find that a winter trail is a beautiful place. Peace and the quiet. Anyhow, we'll be back in a minute. One of the fun things about being out in the woods is simply finding things like a little splash of color right there a little bit of snow a little bit of moss it's all pretty stuff you know you know mother nature she's a wonderful old girl okay I'll be back in a minute 